Okay, this is the third in a series of videos that will show us how to talk to ChatGPT and get it to talk back to us. And what we've done so far is we've set up this application in Node, Express, and JavaScript to be able to push this record button here, record our voice, and pass that on to Google's cloud speech library, which is transcribing what we're saying. And now what we want to be able to do is pass that on to our large language model, in this case, ChatGPT, and get it to answer or respond to whatever we're saying and print that out on screen here. A real quick walkthrough of what that looks like. Hit this record button. And now you should start to see what I'm saying pop up under the you said section of the page there. And there we go. It was a little bit laggy, but our transcript is showing up. So now let's get into some of the fun stuff, which is integrating AI and ChatGPT. Okay, where we left off in the code was that when you release this button, we stop polling for transcript results and we call this handle server stop record function. That goes to our API. It tells it to stop and then it resolves this promise so that we can move on. After that, we want to do all this stuff. But because we're dealing with a promise, we want to wait until we've successfully stopped. So let's add this then clause. And then we'll move all this stuff in there. So we already did that with the toggle transcription polling, but we need to submit that transcription to ChatGPT do that here. And so I'm just calling this function handle server submit transcription. Then I'm waiting for a response from the server. And I need to know what that is. It's going to be some text that ChatGPT responded with. And then again here, I'm going to do the rest of this stuff. Now you can see how if each one of these was an asynchronous call that we had to wait for, we could get into some weird nesting issues. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. I'm also not going to worry about when this transcription stops. It may cause some problems because the speech client may still be trying to translate something we said and we're just cutting it off. So we'll look at that later, but for now, we'll just leave that where it is. So now let's make this handle server submit transcription. It's going to start to look familiar because it's another promise where we grab an API endpoint, submit transcription, and we return the data.ai response. So head over to the index, which is the server-side file. OK, before we do anything, we haven't actually included any open AI stuff yet. So first, we need to import that library. So I'll go ahead and do that here. I'm importing the OpenAI library, and then I'm requiring this .env config. So this is something you may use a lot whenever we have an API key or some other secret that we don't want people to see. We can specify that in a .env file. And I'm doing two things here. I'm including that, but I'm also just telling it to initialize. The reason I'm doing that is because the next thing we do is we're going to instantiate OpenAI and pass in our API key. Without this API key, OpenAI won't work. So where is it going to look for that key? It's going to look for it in our env file. And the way that Node refers to that is process.env and then whatever we call our variable, which is going to be OpenAI API key. Next thing we need to do is in the root of our project here, I'm going to create a file called .env. And in that file, I'm going to paste in this variable name. And that's going to be equal to something. We don't know what that is yet because we haven't set up the OpenAI API. So let's go to OpenAI. And I've already created an account. You may need to do that. But once you log in, you'll get this option for API. And there's lots of instructions here on how to get started, examples of different things you can do. You can see we've got things like speech to text, fine tuning, embeddings, image generation, etc. We have a forum where you can ask questions. And 
I mentioned they have speech to text. I could have used their speech to text and Google Cloud speech text to speech, but I'd rather just be consistent and use Google Cloud the whole way through. At any rate, here's my account. And under this, I can view API keys. I know my API key. I'm going to paste that into that .env file. Okay, so back in our server-side index file here, we have a value that can be inserted for our OpenAI key. OpenAI, when we pass this in, we'll know that we're authenticated and able to use their service. So I mentioned a config for ChatGPT. Let's create that here. We'll call it completions config. And I put a few things in here. I've got this be brief false. And I put that in just to show you some prompt engineering later. But if we were to set that to true, what we're going to do is when we tell ChatGPT to answer the user's question, we're going to add some instructions to, hey, keep it short, even though you can see this next variable here is called max tokens. That is an official part of the OpenAI API, and we can set a limit for the length of the response from ChatGPT. This temperature variable is another official uh, part of that API, and temperature in machine learning has to do with how creative the model is in its response. It can be very literal or it can be very abstract. That value ranges from zero to one with higher being more creative. So if it were at a one, it'd be very creative. If we're at a zero, it'd be very literal. Okay, so on our front end, remember we made this call to submit transcription. We need to actually make that function. So down here with our other API methods, Let's add that in. It's going to follow the same kind of format as this. And here are the steps. We need to create the chat completion. We need to handle any prompt engineering. So for example, that be brief instruction. We need to pass in our transcription and our config that we just made. We need to wait for a response from ChatGPT and return that to the front end. Okay, so what is the syntax for doing that? Well, in OpenAI, we have this API reference. Their documentation is a little better than Google Cloud Speech, thankfully. And here on the sidebar are the different API endpoints. So endpoints, you can think of them as functionality of an API. So we have endpoints for audio, for chat, for completions, embeddings, etc. We want completions. Here, similar to Google Cloud Speech, we have all of the different things that we can pass to the API. And then we have an example here of how to do it. And this is really nice. We can choose which language we're using. They have Python, Node, and curl. We're using Node. So we could just copy that and paste that straight into our code. I've done something just slightly custom, so I'm gonna paste that in. So I'm creating this variable called completion, and I'm using this await syntax. I think that's the first time I've used it in the code. And probably would want to be consistent and use await across everything or use promises, which is what we've been using so far. But await works exactly the same way. For any function that we're calling that returns a promise, we can just say await the results of that promise. And that way, any code we write down here won't execute until that promise has been resolved. So into the create function, we're passing this object. The first thing it includes is this messages array. We only have one message that we're going to send. In that message, our role is the user. We could also play the role of the large language role. And the content is going to be determined on what we set the value of be brief to. If we've not asked it to be brief, we just pass the stream script in as normal and let ChatGPT respond as is. If we do want it to be brief, we need to add some additional instructions to the large language model to do that. So I've added what is referred to prompt engineering. I wouldn't call it much engineering on my part because I'm not exactly skilled at how to create these instructions to the large language model, but this does work. I can say, respond to the following query and be as brief as possible in your response. And then I pass in the script as is, 
But because I've set that context to be brief, it's going to give me a shorter response. Now, aside from our messages array, we've got this max tokens, which we're getting from our config, the temperature that we mentioned, and our model, which in this case is going to be GPT 3.5 Turbo. And obviously, we could be using GPT-4, which is a newer and more advanced model. It has different implications in terms of what it costs to use. Let's actually look at that. Here's all the things that we can pass it and some helpful descriptions. Temperature, max tokens. We could be passing all this stuff in top P. I don't see model listed here. Here's an example where that is happening, where they're passing it in. Let's see if we can find a list of those models. Here's a function where we can list the models. Here's pricing conveniently hidden under our account. And here's the different large language models. You can see it lists the context. And this has an 8K context. GPT 3.5 Turbo has a 4K context. So what is that? 8K context is twice as large in this case, and that means it has more of a memory. It can retain more instructions before it responds. And that's going to be helpful if we're needing to explain a lot of things to ChatGPT to get it to understand and provide a better response. If we're just asking it simple things, it's not going to need that long context window. But it might, depending on your use case. As far as input, that's what we ask ChatGPT for. It's going to charge us 0 0.03 cents per 1,000 tokens. So you could think of those tokens as words. It's probably going to be more than just words. It's going to be parts of words. But essentially, you could pass it 1,000 of these tokens, and it would only charge you 0 0.03 cents. On the output, on the stuff it gives back to you, it's twice as expensive for those 1,000 tokens. If you wanted to increase the context window to 32,000, you can see our price doubles on both accounts. We're using GPT 3.5 Turbo, and you can see our cost has halved. It's gone down to 0 0.0015 on the input and 0 0.02, which is actually a third on the output. If we want to go up to the 16K context window, price doubles on top of what the 4K for Jet GPT 3.5 Turbo. So that's a little bit of pricing, conveniently hidden away here, but good to keep an eye on those things. Good to determine what you need and start with the minimum. Start with the smallest model you can that will give you sufficient results and then step it up from there. Okay, so we're back in our server-side code, index.js. We've handled the prompt engineering. We've passed in our transcription and config, and we need to call that completion function. So this is a try-catch block. And what it's going to do is it's just going to, if any errors inside this try occur, we're going to catch those and log what the error is. This is the first time we've used this, but a uh, common thing in JavaScript, try catch block. And you notice the status on this is 500. This is another server error code that we're going to use for unknown errors. And we're going to return to the front end, if that occurs, a message that says whatever the error is. And the idea is that on the front end, we could display that to the user. But hopefully everything will go well. So we are creating this AI response variable. We're setting it equal to the completion. Once we have that, we can send it back to the front end with a message that says success. Here's your response from ChatGPT. And you'll notice we haven't instantiated this variable. We need to do that with like a var or let or const. So I'm gonna just for now make that a global and we'll put that in here. That AI response, it'll be undefined for now. And back on the front end here, you remember we called this API to kick this whole thing off and we were waiting for a response. We now have that. We're going to resolve this promise. And here's where we called that front end function. Here's where we can do things with that transcription. For now, let's just log that response. And we'll test it out, start my server. What is the record for the most women's Grand Slam titles won in tennis?
And here you go. In our console, we have a response. The record for the most women's Grand Slam titles won in tennis is held by Margaret Court. She won a total of 24. Not sure if that's true or not. We need to check it. But we do have a response from ChatGPT, so we know things are working. So that's enough for this lesson. In the next one, we'll do the final piece, which is getting a synthesized speech file of what ChatGPT has given us and reading that back to the user. So essentially, we'll have completed the loop of talking to ChatGPT and getting it to talk back to us. We'll see you in the next video. I'll post the code where we ended up here. Mm -hmm.